I went to film with the Louvain La Neuve group, also in Belgium. So welcome to the University of Louvain La Neuve. We are in the Department of Material Science and we are going to visit the lab. It's a new town development and the campus is part of that. The two scientists in this team are Professor Jean-Christophe Charlier and Dr. Zela Zanoli. In this project, we would like to construct a device which will be able to detect one or two molecules in the gas. And in order to do that, we will use carbon nanotubes. And this carbon nanotube will be decorated with a gold cluster or metallic cluster. We will use carbon nanotubes. We will put some metallic leads to connect these nanotubes and to be able to have access to the electronic properties, so the conductivity of the nanotubes. When the nanotubes will be coated with gold cluster, the response of the nanotubes to electrons, to the transmission of electrons from one lead to another will be different. And when, we'll, when this nanohybrid system will be in presence of molecules in the, in the gas environment, you will have interaction of this molecule with the metallic cluster. A different charge transfer will be performed between this cluster and the nanotubes, and you will have a different response again to the, uh, to the electrons, to, to the conductance of the electrons inside this nanosystem. So a signal could be produced. Tell me about this machine and how it fits in with your work. So this machine is a massively parallel computer. So it's constituted of about 300 processors, which are connected with a high speed. Our calculation will be based on quantum mechanics, and we will try to understand the interaction between uh, uh, nanotubes and some metallic clusters. Tell me about the structures that you uh, have got so far. Zayla uses pure theory. She guesses at gold structures that might be built on a carbon nanotube. And from first principles, her calculations show if it would be stable, change its shape, or just disintegrate. It's just our initial guess. So we, uh, we took this system and, and uh, we, we studied the evolution of this system. So here it is the uh, movie that shows you the structure relaxation. And uh, you can see all the atoms that are moving. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, you can also have a look at the, uh, from a different view of the structure and see what happens. And uh, it is nice to see how the structure is quite different from our starting point. And you can see that the initial structure was this one and the final one is this one, so they are quite uh, different. So we, we, we started from a, a guess and then we let the system evolve until we, we, we got the, the final one. And later on, what we should do is to study how the charge from the gold atoms and the charge of the carbon atoms will uh, interact. So if there will be some charge transfer from the two structures. Okay, so I'm going to explain you how big is a nanometer. So we start in this scale from a football, and we are going to a carbon C60, which is the size of the molecule uh, close to the system we are working on. So let's start with the football. So we are in the range of one meter. Now we go to the millimeter with the flea. After we go to 10 minus four meter, so with the human hair. Between 10 minus five and 10 minus six meter, you have red blood cell. If we go to 10 minus seven meter, we reach virus. If you continue decreasing, we go to 10 minus 9, so the size of the nanometer, which is a strand of DNA. And at last, we go to between 1 nanometer and 1 angstrom, which is 10 minus 10 meters. We reach the C60 molecule. Zeil has the beginnings of a story explaining what experimentalists find, that it's difficult to get gold to stick. We have a different situation. Again, in grey is the nanotube and uh, the yellow is the gold. And uh, 
the nice thing is that we can see that the gold uh, slightly tends to detach from the uh, nanotube and uh, the, the planar structure takes a, a curve um, it takes a curvature that is quite similar to the curvature of the uh, of the nanotube. There are not any more uh, bonds from uh, the gold atoms and uh, the nanotube, but still there is an interaction, so the golds are not uh, flowing away. So metals often don't want to stick to nanotubes. And I began to realise that that's where the plasma came in. But I wasn't to hear about that until I got to Brussels. What sort of person are you? What do you do outside science? A meal. <laughs> uh, I'm married. I have three daughters. Uh, uh, I'm living in the countryside, so quite far from my university, about one hour driving. Um, I'm working, I'm living in a old farm that I'm renovating. So we have animals there, like donkey, sheep, goats, chicken. <laughs> um, what else? Tell me about your wife. What is uh, she like? Uh, she is uh, half Hungarian, half Italian. Uh, she's a lawyer in Charleroi, so uh, quite close from, from uh, home. And uh, she's not a scientist at all. <laughs> uh, uh, doing this kind of job in, uh, in research, um, you have, um, there is a, a specific time in, uh, uh, in your life that's about between uh, when you are 25 and 35 years old, where you should do all the best that you can. And this um, uh, is quite different for um, when it's about of female or male, because uh, um, around that age, in, in this 10 years uh, uh, time, uh, usually is the time for uh, women to marry, to have children and uh, raise up their family. And, but this, of course, uh, uh, cannot be properly done if you have uh, uh, such a demanding uh, job. Uh, the things is different for male because uh, they usually tend to, to marry and to have a family afterwards. Or even if they have the family, they are not uh, physically having the children and going uh, through all the process. What were your parents, or what are your parents like? What, whether they, what were they doing when you were... Growing up, go. Yeah, well, uh, um, okay, it's not a, okay. Uh, in my case, uh, um, okay, I'm not seeing my father since more than twenty years uh, because mm, my parents divorced, so he doesn't have a clue of what I'm doing, uh, where I am, and so on. So um, that's completely ruled off. <laughs> But uh, for uh, my mother, uh, Twer was, um, yeah, okay, she knows that I'm doing something that uh, I like very much, uh, and uh, in a sense she's happy for this, but uh, uh, Twer is a kind of big drama because I'm far away from home. I would say that life was never easy for me, <laughs> so uh, I was used to have a uh, um, kind of difficult time uh, always, and... Uh, um, I grew up in a sense quite strong uh, because things that were happening around me were not nice at all. So 